But first to what's being described as one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in British history. Ministers have met this afternoon to discuss a mass judicial appeal to quash the convictions of hundreds of sub-postmasters prosecuted in the post office Horizon scandal. The extraordinary chain of events, which occurred between 1999 and 2015, saw more than 100 branch managers convicted of theft and fraud, all based on faulty software. Many endured jail sentences, while some even took their own lives. Well, a recent ITV drama, Mr Bates via the Pope versus the post office, which told the story of the fight for justice of some of those involved, has now thrust the scandal back into the limelight. Victims are calling for Lib Dem leader Sir Ed Davey to be held accountable for what they have branded the wicked decisions he made as Postal Affairs Minister. After it emerged, he and other ministers were aware of the issues with the faulty Horizon system. But it comes as Rishi Sunak has said that he strongly supports calls for the former post office boss Paula Venels to lose her CBE after an online petition has reached over a million signatures. Last year, one of the victims, Nicola Arch, told Jeremy Kyle Investigates that she was subject to aggressive questioning despite pleading her innocence. They accused me of stealing the money. Um, took me off to the Crown Office, locked me in a room until quarter to four in the afternoon, um, questioned me all day on record, recorded it, and basically said, you're wasting all our time, tell us where you've put the money, you're the only one who's had a problem with this. Wow. And it just went on. And I said, look, I've never, ever taken any money whatsoever. Well, that was just one of the stories of the industrial scale criminal gaslighting that went on to these poor families and poor sub postmasters mercifully i think now finally people are fully aware of or partially aware of the full scale of the scandal that happened um and and of course people are now demanding answers and demanding and i think we all know that compensation is due and that the scale and the speed at which the compensation has been handed out has been appalling 90 so sub postmasters out of 800, 900 of them who are potentially due compensation. That's one issue. And I think that is an issue that should be reasonably easily solved. I think the bigger issue now is who knew what when, who covered what up when, and who's finally going to be answerable and stand up and say, you know, fall on their sword or be forced to fall on their sword. And, and I wonder whether the Paula Venels thing is a little, the CBE thing is a little bit of a red herring because having your CBE taken away compared to being faced with potential criminal charges it is, that, it is slightly yeah. a Yeah, but it was issue. for services to the post office. No, no, it wasn't I, just for general, you know, the CB. That, that, was, is, that is... No, no, I, I get that. I would just like her to actually face it's not, police, yeah. face yeah, a court. You're right. That is that, that would be like, OK, you know, a bit of icing on the cake, if you want to call it that. But what is so suspicious about this, I know that, you know, the establishment versus the working man, but it has got all of that. It's the car, I spoke to Will Meller a little earlier, who, who played mm. the, the part of one of the... Uh, the wrongly accused. And he, like a lot of people, said if you'd put this in a script and sent it off to Netflix or ITV, they'd have gone, oh, come on, mate, that will never happen. It's too far-fetched. And everybody had that view. I was talking about this about five years ago with Nick Wallace, the journalist who diligently attended every day at many of those hearings and managed to at least keep the story bubbling away a bit. What I find really odd is that the, somebody at the post... or nobody at the post office, apparently, they had 700 postmasters who'd all committed... The same crime, similar amounts yeah. of money, mm. at the same... And nobody went, hang on a sec, mm. it's a bit weird, isn't it? I, uh, I interviewed, funny enough, the woman who wrote the script for Alan Bates against the post office, and uh, I asked her exactly that question, because she'd spent three years writing the script. She said something really interesting to me. She said, look, a lot of post office management assumed that the sub-postmasters were ripping them off. Then they put in this high-tech computer system, computer can't fail, and it confirms their prejudices. And it becomes, for them, this self-fulfilling prophecy. But it is a massive scandal. I think Daisy's absolutely right. We're here and now. We all know it's on the table. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows that pretty much every sub-postmaster convicted deserves to be exonerated and have their um, conviction quashed. We know that if you go f into prison for murder and it's subsequently discovered you didn't do it, you get significant compensation. So let's just give these people the money they deserve to get their lives back on track. Some of them wasted 20 years of their life. And we're so bad in this country at prosecuting white collar crime when money is involved or whatever, but heads have to roll. You have to show that people who run big companies who screw up like this, worse than screw up, deserve to go to prison. Yeah. Well, I, 
this, this, this is going to sound heartless, but I feel like the British public are very stupid. How's it taken an ITV drama to suddenly make everyone care about this? It's, if, read the news, watch the news, listen to the news. As you say, it started in 1999. Yeah. Um, MP Kevin Holland... 25 years his, old. But, yeah. yeah the MPs have been, have been doing stuff about it. Not enough, not quickly enough. 138 million paid out in conversation so far. Things have been happening, but it's taken an ITV drama for people now to sit home and go... 138 million in conversation, 154 million on lawyers' fees. Yeah. More. Yeah. yeah more well, millions on lawyers. lawyers. Because it's not a sexy headline, is it? Postmasters, yes. you know, being, be, being accused of um, wrongfully taking money out of the till. It's not yeah. sexy. No one cared. Ed Davey didn't care. He didn't bother to read no. the letters properly. But you know he didn't what? bother to respond. Because it's the little people that are running and that are keeping the towns and, you know, post offices and towns and villages but, 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 going. But the thing, I think people did care. That's the thing. I remember the story at the time. I was, what, 18, 19 at the time? I remember my local post office having to sell his wife's jewellery to pay the deficit, to help try and pay towards the deficit of really? money that got missing. Yeah, because it was their responsibility to fill... Yeah, yeah. but you had a direct experience. Yeah. But, JJ, I mean, weirdly, we sort of work in what is loosely called the creative industries, film and TV. <laughs> yeah. I would say I would take exactly the opposite view. It shows the power of drama to bring alive an issue like this. The point is people care but it about people. They don't it care about abstract... It is that terrible statistic. If you say 700 sub-postmasters have been locked up... Mm. You say my next door neighbour, who's a sub postmaster who I love, who's part of the community, is yeah, locked up. It's, it's a different story, and you put it in a drama, it really hits home. It's a lesson. Culture minister. It's a lesson. Course. It is a lesson about the power of TV. But what, what about politicians like Ed Davey, who say, I mean, you, you were in, you were in the cabinet, um, you know, in the coalition government. So was he. Yes, he was a Lib Dem. Is he being hung out to dry, or should he be? Well, more this answerable? is a really, really difficult one because obviously Ed Davey is going to get a lot of stick for this. It may cost him the leadership of the Lib Dems because yeah. this. Could be hanging I around agree. his neck in the run to the election. There is a case, dare I say it, for the defence, which is if you're sitting behind a desk and your officials are saying, nothing to see here, it's all kosher, your, these chief executives are coming in, we've looked into it, Minister, it's all fine, it's very hard to kind of get out of the mm. orbit of that when the sub-postmasters come and see you and say, I'm really going to put my shoulder to the wheel Ed Davey. and make this a big, uh, big campaign. Since 2019, Ed Davey has called for 31 yeah. People to stand out. That is true. Jobs. You live yeah. by the sword. Yeah, he's got to quit. Okay. There it is. I I, th I agree. I think this would cost. If it doesn't cost him a leadership, I think it could cost him a lot of votes. Totally right. Okay. Really bad for the Lib Dems. Yeah. I know that sounds deeply cynical and narrow-minded, but it is true. I oh, agree. That's yeah. no bad thing, Ed. Um, <laughs> so. From <laughs>